What is happening? Welcome to another Pitcher Video Breakdown. My name is Nick Pollock. Today, ah, it's Shane Boz. Oh, man, we've been waiting a long time for this. I actually saw Shane pitch in the AFL Fall Stars game two years ago. I sat next to Jeff Erickson, freaked out. I had no idea who this guy was. All of a sudden, he's throwing upper 90s with a legitimate low 90 slider. I saw, sat right behind home plate and watched him. It was amazing, and I thought in my head, okay, when he comes up, I'm going to be very excited. I just hope he throws enough strikes. So, we saw him yesterday. Five innings, just under 70 pitches. And I figured today, instead of just doing one inning like I normally do, we're going to do the entire game. So sit back, relax. I know it might be a lot, but I feel like you got to understand the entire thing. I'll probably breeze through some of this because I'm not just going to break down all of the pitches and it's just going to be too much. So let's enjoy it. This is him. And I want you guys to notice right away for the first pitch here against Springer, look how simple his mechanics are. Super, super straightforward. And there are a couple guys I instantly thought of when I saw this. Uh, one is Noah Syndergaard. It's just very straight and forward, right? There's not much going on. And it's also the other the second one is Michael Kopech. I mean, look at this. It's just, it's just up and then out. You know? He keeps it very straight up here. There's not many moving parts. It's just a straight line. And then release. Now, he is coming a little bit on the side. He's not as over the top as we've seen from other guys. And he tugged that one over. Very first pitch ever thrown in the majors. Understood. A little hype. And he is going, like, a little wide on that uh, on this. Pulling that way. But this is all pretty... I mean, yeah, he's, like, a little bit extra turned. Like that. As opposed to staying completely straight. Does that make sense? Um, like, think about his arms instead of like this. He's more like that. He's twisted and then comes back over. But that's nothing to be really worried about here. And he, and he just didn't get quite the timing right, so he pulled it over to the left. But I but I like this. I mean, this this allows for easy adjustments. Um, it's something I recommend all the time is the more simple you can be. And just li literally all it is, he's straight. Brings it up. Head is in the same spot. Top half is the same spot. I know I'm bringing on mechanics, but I feel like this is important. The arm angle isn't actually very extreme. <coughs> Excuse me. The arm is bent the entire way through. And you just kind of go straight to the plate. 96 miles per hour. It is, I will say that that, that little extra twist does make it a little bit tougher to say straight. It makes, it's a little extra crossbody, but it's, it's not bad. It's not really an extreme thing. So there you go, 97. And he throws hard. <laughs> All he's trying to do in this first at bat, and Springer knows it too. I uh, this is generally what um, we see from Mel B debut is I uh, we see a, a guy come up and just say, "Hey, look, just throw fastballs, just throw fastballs, get strikes with fastballs." Um, Alec Manoa was very interesting to me because he came out and threw like sliders and changeups in that first at bat, and I'm going, "What? Like you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to just throw fastballs all the time." Uh, I think the same thing with, um, was it Edward Cabrera? Well, I know Sixto Sanchez was a little different. But uh, but you're going to see that in this at-bat here. Because, of course, I watched most of this game yesterday already. Um, this is 1-2 here. And we haven't, well, what we've seen so far from, from Boz is uh, is just fastballs of Springer. And Spring keeps filing them off. And Springer's upset because he knows these are fastballs. And he still, he should be able to crush this. He's had so many leadoff home runs in his day. And he didn't do anything with them. And he's still not doing it. And that's 99. Sorry, at this point now, 1-2. It's like, come on, Boz. Give us the goods. We want to see the slider. And we got it. Ugh. It's not the good one. That's not the good one. He's not trying to throw that one upstairs. But the reason that it's a different speed is why Springer whiffs. It's not the movement or anything or location. It's just that it's a different speed. That's all it is. You know, he could have, if he threw anything that was a slower speed and relative, to the, like, close to the zone, that was a 10 mile per hour difference, 12 actually to this previous pitch. That's why Springer th swung through that. But imagine if it actually was located down here where we wanted to. We'll see. Here's Semyon. And yeah, throw some fastballs. Wow, they give him that call. You normally just don't see that. That's right at the top. And there's a slider. And again, that's not a good one. That That's not a good slider. Right? This is a... Uh, He's trying to get this down. Here we go. And that's middle, 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 middle. I mean, the whole way through here, Semyon is swinging. 
So, yes, he's a little out in front of us and it does hit a bit at the end of the bat. But because it's just so hittable, like, it's easy for a hitter to make the adjustment, right? That's the difference between, like, why you don't want to put a, fa a, a breaking ball in the middle as opposed to down. Is that they are committed for this to be a fastball because they still think it's in the zone. And then because, it, because it's so, like, because it lands here, that means it's been in the zone the entire time. So it's very easy for them to do something with it. You got a bit lucky there. So here's Vlad Guerrero. Tries to throw a fastball for a strike. Guerrero just says, all right, I'm, I'm not swinging at that. Misses again. And here's the thing. Now at 2-0. <coughs> at 2-0 to Guerrero, you want to be careful. And this is really a challenge, I think, for, for a pitcher. In general, you'll see a breaking stuff, a breaking pitcher or a secondary pitch of some kind for a strike. Against Guerrero with two outs, you want to say, look, worst case scenario, I throw a ball and, like, sure, I walk him with two outs. That's okay. If it's a strike, you get back in the count. The worst thing you can do is throw a meatball fastball that he's looking for and selling out for it too. Oh, so it's a real challenge. You're coming up and like, let's see. I want to see if you can throw a secondary pitch for a strike when you need to. <laughs> and he doesn't. But Guerrero thinks that he doesn't have the brass to do that in his MLB debut. And he gets some swing on. The, I mean, this is filth. Like out of the hand. Guerrero's like, all right, there's my fastball. I'm going to crush this. And it's actually kind of looking like the bottom of the zone right now still. And then it just, ooh, go away. Big swing. So what what happens when you see that at 2-1, right? You see that at 2-1. And what's the rule, guys? You listen to what the batter is telling you, right? So at 2-1, what does he do? He throws another one. He throws another one. And that's even better than the last one because that one actually looks a little bit higher up. Inside the zone for a little bit longer. A little bit more in the inside corner that, that Guerrero should be able to, to swing the bat. Look at his. I don't know if you can see it. But look at the smile he has. Ah, he's upset. <laughs> I mean, I would be too. He thinks that he has a meaty fastball for two straight pitches. Doesn't get one. So now, so now what do you do? Right? You just saw Guerrero swing and miss on two sliders. You could throw a third, but Guerrero's a little too smart for that. No. You do the proper Blake Snell blueprint, and that would be... Back in the day when I came up with that in 2018, it was sliders and curveballs down here and fastballs all the way up here, completely avoiding the middle horizontal section of the plate, which is, I think, more important than middle vertical, personally. You can get away with uh, with like a fastball over here, but if you get one here and here, it's very easy to handle. That's generally how I feel about it. Down and middle, we both can agree, is just not good. <laughs> anyway, so he goes up and 99 up. Is so hard to say no to when you just saw two pitches down here at 88. And that that mix of like it comes out middle here and this is going to go down here or it's going to go up here. Oh, it's so hard as a batter. You know, it's not easy. All you want is just a meaty pitch right here to the crush and you just don't get it. Not this entire bat. In fact, Shane Boz did not throw one single strike in his entire at bat. Threw five balls, and Guerrero got himself out. All right, so there you go. There, there's, there's just I could really just end this breakdown honestly with that first inning, right? So what Shane showed us is that he has an overpowering fastball that he wants to elevate. Sweet. He throws a slider that is clearly whiffable and he can throw it down. Awesome. And he also has the approach of 2-0 going to that slider. The real other thing that I'm going to be looking for now in the next couple of innings is does he have a third pitch that he can get strikes with? Remember, the main three qualities I look for, really, when you're talking about an arsenal, like what is the ideal pitch mix? It's a fast one you can get strikes with effectively inside the zone. It's a secondary pitch you can get whiffs with, and we saw both of those things so far. But the third thing is I need a secondary pitch you can get for a strike that is an 0-0-0-1, maybe that 2-0, where they're not swinging. You can steal a strike and get free real estate with it. It's very important to have that because... I mean, you just saw that at bat. If they just stay disciplined and don't swing, it will be inefficient for Shane Boz. You have to force them to swing. So there's 93. And I remember seeing this and feeling a little weird. Uh, because he threw 99 to, to Guerrero. Maybe it was 96 before. And 93 felt off, off. And maybe I think, I think Boz was thinking, all right, I went out there, had all this adrenaline. Like, I got to calm down and save myself a little. I can't just... You know, be gassed by the fourth or fifth. So I think he kind of went out there thinking that a little bit in this at bat. 
And there's 94, and I'm like, is this a sinker? What's going on here? And there's a beautiful 85 mile per hour slider. And the, the reason that's gorgeous is I could see Bo not swinging at it. I mean, it's a strike all the way through. I don't know why you wouldn't. But theoretically, if he didn't, this would still be a one and two count. The fact that he's getting it in the zone and right at the bottom like that, it gives it at least a semblance of the idea that the, the Boz can, uh, can turn that slider into that third quality of a secondary pitch that he can throw for a strike. That's the first one. I guess the George Springer one technically was, but that was a mistake that just happened to hit the top of the zone. But the other sliders that we saw in the first uh, to Guerrero uh, were uh, underneath the zone. We did see the semi and a bad one in the middle of the plate. That's the first well-commanded one inside the zone. So that's, that's gorgeous. Now one and two, honestly, I mean, I would throw it again, right? You just saw him swing and miss on it. He's fooled by it. Either that or go upstairs with heaters. I mean, that's pretty much the decision all the time. So we'll see what we, go, what we get here. Tried to go upstairs. You got it inside here. Actually, I love this. Um, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I love this pitch. I love, like, anyone that can jam a guy up and in right here is going to have success often. He fouled that off to the right side like that. And when it comes to, like, the swing of the bat, you can foul it off here. But if that was middle, the bat had actually hadn't gone out this far yet. So he would have likely more gotten a better whiff here than he would have here. Uh, kind of interesting. But uh, I still love that approach more if he can do that with any consistency. Way better than, than going up in middle. So that's easier to hit, right? Because it's giving the bat more time to get to that pitch. Uh, so that's going to be fouled off. He's got to get that a little bit higher, a little bit more middle. Um he wants to get that whiff, but now that you've thrown two fastballs up, you throw a slider down, I mix that up. And that's really nice. That's, I mean, sure it was in play, but this is off the end of the bat. Like, look look where this, this contact, you can't really see the exact frame, but you can, you can tell. This is the end of the bat. And that's why it's kind of a weak grounder to second. So that's going to be an out either way. He's swinging, he's committed, he's not going to do anything with it. The best that uh, Bo could hope for at that point would be a foul ball. And Nah, didn't happen. Woo! Woo, and that, ooh, that's not the slider. That had a lot more hum to it. That's a curveball. So he's trying to get free real estate here, and Teoscar Hernandez is thinking, I'm going to get a good fastball here. I'm going to kill this pitch. But look at this. Look at this guy. Man. So, so I hope that becomes that number three pitch, right, the one that I'm talking about of being inside the zone. Because that's – that shouldn't be – he was trying to do free real estate there. And instead, did exactly right by just getting outside the zone and, and, and getting a whiff from Teoscar. So, seeing that, I'm throwing him a slider here. I'm not giving him a fastball. Teoscar and Endes is being aggressive on that. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no! No! That was so preventable! Seeing a guy at OO swing that aggressively on a secondary pitch, you got to force him to change his approach. Like, you, you got to at least take one pitch to force him. You know, he, he's showcasing that that's what he wants to do. And even, like, even if at, at O one you see a – you see a uh, – sorry, you throw a slider because, hey, he just, he just whiffed on a slider or a breaking ball, and he says, no, I'm not going to swing at it this time. You can still throw another one because, really, that first pitch tells you the entire way what Teoscar Hernandez is trying to do. And this first pitch, this first pitch is telling Boz that Teoscar Hernandez wants to swing at your fastball aggressively. If he's going to swing at that first pitch curveball out of the zone. So that's why I get upset because this is actually not a bad pitch, but it was the wrong pitch. And you had a hint. It was there. And it's easy for me. It's easy for me to say this in retrospect. Right? But there are, I mean, these are philosophies that we go through. And I think that's going to be a conversation that, that is had later on. Uh, I know. Who am I? I'm sitting in this armchair in my room or whatever talking about this. And it's easy for me to say that was the wrong thing. But it, there, are, there are those little elements that I think you can pull from this um, that, you, that you, at least makes you consider what kind of approach you should have moving forward when you're given that kind of hint. That's all. I get very passionate about this.
I mean, look, I, I, this, I go through this all the time when I pitch and everything. Of thinking about what you know, how I could have done better with it, and that's that would be going through my head if I'm Boz at that point. The thing is, I mean, this is really funny. <laughs> no one is gonna laugh at this except me. <laughs> but <laughs> why is this funny? Um, all of all of Boz's fastballs have been up, right? Not a single one has been in the bottom third or down. But after he allows a home run on a really good, like, in general, I love that pitch. Right at the top of the zone, fastball. What we see after that is allowing a home run to that high pitch, he throws one down. <laughs> because he's, like, subconsciously, he's scared of, like, ah, okay, don't get this, you know, don't make a mistake with it up again. But obviously, this is just, I think, circumstance more. It's just funny to me. It's like the one after you throw up, like, okay, I'm going to throw it down now. <laughs> No, Shane, don't change what you're doing. Keep throwing high fastballs. They're good. And there's a slider that it's fine um, because he just threw 97 down away. Uh, I don't think Alejandro Kirk is going to make the adjustment to take advantage of an 88 mile per hour slider that's kind of hittable. Uh, he had to commit to the fastball and he, he rolls it over. That makes sense to me. Ah, look at that. That's free real estate. I love this. Look at look at these jelly legs. Look look at these jelly legs. Huh! <laughs> free real estate. That's great. So that's twice now. That's twice that the boss has gone to the curveball and uh, gone free real estate on it. And an early early O oh, count strike. That's exactly what I wanted to see with it. Um and he's not being aggressive, Guriel. So I I'd be I I don't really know what to throw at in this count. I mean, it was clear he was looking for a fastball and, like, you know, that was going at him that came back over, jelly legs and all that kind of stuff. So he is looking for a fastball. So you might want to be able to sneak in another curveball, honestly, if you can do that. So, look, he learned his lesson. He learned his lesson because this time, again, showcasing I want a fastball. I don't want a secondary pitch. So what does he throw this time instead of a fastball up? It's a slider, and what do you know? He gets a whiff. Okay, now 0-2. Showcase twice in a row that he wants a fastball. I mean, honestly, I think you can. You you can really go the extra step here uh, and throw a fastball up. Why? Because Guriel did not want to throw, did not get a fastball the first count, did not get a second count, and kind of really really exposed his hand now. So he's going to probably adjust his approach to think secondary pitch. We'll see. Oh! Oh, I think he did. And I actually remember this replay. I think he did. But I think that's the point, though. If he was still selling out for fastball, he would have swung all the way through on this. Uh, and there's a part of his head that was thinking that this could be a, a slider. Um, now that he resisted one, he might think go back to a fastball. But honestly, if I'm if I'm Boz, I don't give him a fastball in this count. Yeah. Okay, see you. Bye. I mean, that, that's, the, uh, that's the classic philosophy, right? Of I... Uh, of essentially in a breaking ball count, a pitcher does not get the strikeout or the out. The batter then thinks they deserved it, right? And I think one of the biggest flaws that young pitchers make, uh, and I say young, I want to say like guys that are sequencing. Uh, so that's really high, late high school and, and college. One of the biggest mistakes is that you have to change it up. That you always have to play this dance back and forth, back and forth, right? And different looks on each pitch. It's not the case. Because they're doing the same dance with you uh, most of the time. I mean, if it's just a <laughs> if it's just a plebe, you know, high schooler playing, you know, playing baseball not thinking about it, then fine. You can actually mess around with that. But guys that are really focused in with you are gonna do the dance with you, no fastball up and in and then slide her down away. And they know that dance. So you can actually that kind of stuff is out the window. Uh, anyway, so there's this beautiful one again. So now we're the third inning. 26 pitches in. We've got this video is only halfway over. Not even. We got a lot more left. Here we go. Third inning. Try to get that first pitch uh, free real estate. Love that uh, idea. Missed it. Probably will go with the fastball now. I was not too worried about Grichik, I imagine. Yep. 96. Throw it again. He just whiffed on it. Yep. Throw it again. He can't do it. Go higher up. He's swinging at it. Nah. I mean, that, I mean, that could have worked. That could have worked, but I mean, he wasted it. And like Grichik, Grichik is showing he wants to swing at it, 
But he's not. He didn't take advantage of the easy ones. Give him a hard one. Go up. Okay, well that's filthy though. <laughs> I mean, that's also the. That's exactly what I was just talking about too. With uh, I think either way you would have had Grichik. Um, but that's. I mean, that is the thing, right? He thought he earned a fastball. He didn't get one. Swung over it, right? You don't have to mix it up just for the sake of mixing it. Hey, it's a lefty. Is this the first lefty? Like I don't. I, I don't think we've seen a single lefty. Oh, I'm interested in this. What is his approach? I mean, it's Jake Lamb. So like, oh wow, <laughs> that's like, <laughs> that's the uh, that's some early contact on that. That I mean, so it looks. I'm trying to get an understanding of what the intent is, and I get I get a feeling that this is what the intent is, which is good. That's what I want it to be. Um, what I've talked about before uh, earlier in this video was what's better is. Um, Missing high and low is better than like middle is better than vertical middle. Vertical middle is more dangerous again than uh, I. Oh man, it's so hard to phrase it because they're both technically vertical middle, they're both technically horizontal middle. It depends on what the reference point is. I'm saying essentially in and out middle is worse as a pitcher. You want to avoid this part more than you want to avoid up and down middle. Right, so I guess the y-axis middle versus the, I, uh, the y-axis middle actually would be this, and the x-axis middle would be that. We're okay, yeah. Uh, you can phrase it either way you want. It's it's a strange thing because the middle goes. I'm gonna keep moving on. <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> anyway, that that was a little bit dangerous. And there you go. Oh, look at that! The brass, the brass for that. Oh, I love it. Uh, Springer, remember, first step bat. So all fastballs, all fastballs to that last slider. And I think Springer's thinking second time through, I'm going to get that first pitch breaking ball. Like he has a couple guys here, and I'm going to take advantage of that. And he just took 97 down the pipe. And Springer, anytime you see a batter look down like this after taking a strike, they're they're <laughs> they're not happy. <laughs> they're thinking like, ah, they're getting contemplative. And oh man, I'm going to brush some things over as I question my life choices um i think you can throw sliders now and he did he left one a little bit up this is very hittable and this is kind of what so so i, I might i might have been wrong here because uh, i said you throw sliders now um again this is kind of go back to the philosophy of, like make the batter showcase that he's changed his approach uh so you had the the first pitch fastball and springer's telling him like hey i want to i want a breaking ball now uh, and so now he gave him a breaking ball, and this is a this is a doozy. This is a mistake. Oh man! And Springer just missed us, slightly off the end of the bat. I mean that should have been gone, right? And that's what he was looking for from the first pitch. Didn't change his approach. Good on Springer. He just just missed it. First pitch curveball again. I mean this curveball is actually really uh, don't undervalue this curveball. Uh, I think this is the fifth one he's thrown, and four of them have returned strikes. The one to Semyon, the one to – sorry, not Semyon, um, to Oscar Hernandez, to Grichik. To Grichik didn't get one. He threw fastballs to him. Uh, to uh, Guriel, another guy, <coughs> and he missed He missed one of them. He missed – oh, he missed the one to Guriel – or to Grichik. I've been impressed. That curveball is working. Ah. Overthrew that one. Fastball up. Ooh. Never mind. Three straight secondaries. Digging it. Digging it. Now you don't know what's going to happen, Sammy. Is he going to go to that, that slider again? Is he going to go fastball up? What's up? Ah, uh, he was ready for that one, though. Ah. Uh, dang it. Like, I see that, and it's just a 50-50, right? And Sammy was like, no, fastball. He's like, ah. Slider would have had him. Oh, that was fouled out. Oh, get get out of here. He got an out on this. Oh, I just assumed this was foul. But now it looks like I... Look at this play. Hey, all right. That works. Now I'm not upset. <laughs> uh, so that Guerrero is like, okay. He's still hacking. He's still hacking. Remember, last at bat, not a single one was a strike. He doesn't care. So I am doing the same thing again. I'm throwing sliders again now. Oh, you overthrew it. Throw it again. Yep. There you go. He's still up there hacking. Throw it again. Don't throw a high heater. Yes. Beautiful. You got an out. 
Like, think, I mean, don't forget that, right? The first at bat, Guerrero didn't see a single strike, swung on three balls out of the zone. So you would think second at bat, Guerrero might change it and be a little bit more passive. So, no. <laughs> the first pitch comes in and he hacks away. And it's just, all right, fine. We're going to do the same thing again until you show me that you're going to change it. And he didn't. He got himself out. I mean, those were that was a good slider, right? Those were hard to hit. But, uh, yeah, it worked. Uh, really nice pitch. This first pitch, uh, I adore these because that's there's it's so rare. And that does happen. You know, there I've seen it before. I've seen guys hit home runs on these pitches, right? Like, it's not... You know, it, it's not so rare. But for the most part, you, you throw a first pitch strike here with a fastball, that's going to work. You're going to get a foul ball, an out, or a, a called strike. Beautiful. Look at this. So two high fastballs now. You can probably go even more upstairs. Now you can go down with a curveball or slider. Just avoid the center of the plate. Wow, 99. Pretty much telling you that you should be throwing a slider right now. Yeah. Now he thinks he's earned a fastball. Throw another slider. Oh, you overthrew that one. Throw it again. Two, 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 two. Don't give in. Don't give in. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Ah, oh, that's the kind. Of, yes. That's the mentality you have to have as a pitcher. You got to do that. And that might be the catcher instructing this, but you don't give in. You don't give in. This is, this is so great. So this is a, uh, right. So 01, 02, you get two fastballs. And now pretty much you're saying, I am going to get you out on a heater on a, on a slider. Why? Because Bichette has showcased that I want to swing at a fastball this entire at bat. So you have to make a gambit now. So here it is. You even tried to go up and didn't work. So you have to gambit as a pitcher because it will not fail if you execute it once. So the first time he didn't execute it, right? Didn't execute it quite enough. And the reason you're like, oh, but it was close. No, no, no. This is too far away horizontally. So this is easy. This is right here on the corner and. And Bichette is thinking he's going to go a slider at this point. Now, if you go down here and you get that drop, that's going to be a lot harder to resist than going away. Okay? Because, I mean, worst case scenario, you can just poke the bat out and foul it off if it's really going to stay there. Okay? So, I missed with that. Bichette might think, I deserve my fastball now. No, Boz stays with it. Says, no, I'm not going to give you another fastball. And he misses this one. And after, like, I'm, I've already been saying, after you miss once, go a second time. Go a third time after the same principle is there and you don't see that you don't even see like the second one too often But you don't really see the third one where they really lean in and say no I just need to execute one good breaking ball and ba Boz did it and that I know it's not a strikeout But it's an out and this is not a well hit ball. This is This is a This is a grounder like off the end of the bat is is totally expecting fastball like end of the bat here and an out right and yes if he threw it here it would have been a strikeout <clears throat> absolutely who cares it's an out you got it you know you earned that boz like that is the mentality you have to have as a pitcher trust your stuff do the thing you know should work and don't give in to what the batter wants Oh, that, that was awesome. And you don't want to really see that on MLB debut. You normally don't see it from the catcher having to trust in the pitcher for that. You don't really normally have the pitcher confident enough in his stuff to do that. Oh, that is the most hyped at bat of uh, the entire game for me. So awesome. First pitch uh, looks like a slider, I'm going to say, at 83. Probably by the fifth, he's a little bit more tired. Not a good one. And Teoscar Hernandez probably thinking, okay, I hit a home run off of a fastball. Probably not going to give me another one. Uh, is really ready for this one. And Boz, let's be honest, you got lucky. You got lucky. That was a bad location. I mean, this is right in the middle of the plate. Yep. Ooh. He got lucky. So now, I mean, honestly, I kind of give a fastball because I think Hernandez thinks that's the plan of attack against him. See, yeah, he's 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 on the slider. He's on the breaking ball. This has gotten so many whiffs today, but the reason it didn't here is because Teoscar doesn't think he's going to get a fastball. So you got to you gotta do it. Ah, so now Teoscar thought he earned one. Teoscar thought he earned a, a fastball at that point, and Boz is leaning into it. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> so what do you throw now? Do you, like, I would go, I would go above the zone. I would really challenge Teoscar at this point. 
uh, and just be like, I am willing to throw a fastball to you. And then if that misses, I throw two breaking balls. Oh, oh, that was mm, that was close. That was really close. <laughs> you ooh, whoo. not the best slider. Teoscar, I think, was I mean, maybe he was leaning fastball a little bit. That's why he didn't get fully. But oh, this is this is close. I think it. Oh. He just missed another home run. I think I think the high heater would have been best. I mean, it does kind of showcase a little bit that he maybe was on the front foot a little bit. That's why he got the end of the bat, and that's why it was an out. So maybe that means heater, but oof. Yeah, don't get cute. It's Kirk. 98 mile per. He can't hit that. Just go higher up. You keep going up. Yep. And now you now you throw it. Now you throw a breaking ball because he's showcasing it. He's just a fastball guy. Yep. Oh my god. He's so dead to rights. Like, throw it. Ugh. Throw it, throw it again. Throw another slider. No. No, 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 no. Throw another slider. Man. Throw it. Throw a good one. Throw a good one. He's so dead. No, oh, my God. That's three. <laughs> He's, are you going to get him out on bad ones? Come on. You can do this, Boz. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's a funny at bat. <clears throat> he went over for 3, right? He went over three trying to throw the thing that he wanted to do. And uh, it's good that he did that against Kirk. Like, eventually, he threw the fastball. And I will say, like, after you th miss, after you throw your secondary pitch and miss three straight times, uh, it is good to throw something else. It, it can go with the fastball, too. Just throw a different pitch type to try and reset and recalibrate how you throw um, a slider. Because mentally, you do actually think differently. When throwing a fastball, then you do the slider or a curveball. Like you are doing different actions and you're concentrating on different things as you release it. So it is a good habit to, you know, when you miss a lot with the same pitch type, to get away from it so that you want to come back to it. Sometimes you even just take a ball, literally, you just throw a fastball. It's not supposed to be a strike so that you can recalibrate for the slider after. Wow. <laughs> that should not have worked. I guess that's a curveball. That had a lot of drop to it, more so than usual. I mean, if you give a Guriel a fastball, I don't know what you're doing. Like, he just so badly swung at the other one. Okay, now you you don't you throw th two bad ones. It's kind of a risky pitch here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. No. So that's the problem. That's the problem. So, like... So this actually... I, I didn't know that that was the, the home run. I completely had forgotten about the second home run. Um, I didn't mean to. Uh, that, le that legitimately was me predicting that. Um, <laughs> so let me go through this. So what happened here is you have a bad, a badly located breaking ball that gets a whiff, whatever. Then you have another badly located breaking ball. So there's two things going on here. One, Guriel is seeing that Boz doesn't want to throw him a fastball and is probably leaning on a breaking ball in the first place the problem is that boz is not throwing a good one and you don't really want to throw a fastball at this point because guriel is telling you hey i want to throw more i want to hit more fastballs and stuff but i think boz has translated to guriel at this point that he isn't going to give him one and he's adjusted and boz needs to like in this scenario change his approach to be like okay I'm going to guess that Guriel is changing his approach, so I'm going to change mine back. That's a hard thing to do. Uh, so it's a risky pitch right now because you don't know. You don't feel confident either way. Either A, I'm going to throw a fastball and hope that Guriel changes approach, which you don't feel great about. Or two, you're going to stick with the initial plan of the breaking ball, and you better execute a good one. Right? Uh, and so here's the thing. When it comes to breaking balls uh, against a right-hander, same-handedness, same you can get away with inside corner when they're not expecting it. Otherwise, that pitch is so meaty. It's going straight into the barrel, coming back to the plate where the, where the barrel of the bat is. And you want to get this away here. And he leans this. And Guriel, thinking breaking ball the entire way through, is staying in on this pitch as it comes back to the plate. And oh, I just go straight into the barrel of the bat. So there's a story to every home run. And that was, 
that's what happened there. So don't really, don't really judge a boss too much. I mean, like the Teoscar one was so preventable. That one was ah, and and Guriel, man, hats off to him. He pulled it off. Fastball ninety eight because Gritchick can't hit your heater, so just keep throwing it. Nice. He's not. He's not even looking for it. Don't throw him a slider. Don't get cute. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> I mean, that's a really good one. Gritchick is so on his heels at that point, so fine. Uh, that's a really nice one. Really nice drop to it. Uh, perfectly located too. Like, you know, that's a, it's somewhat close to the Guriel one, but this one's underneath the zone. And Gritchick is also on his heels. He doesn't feel. He doesn't have the confidence of of Guriel. He's going to swing over that all the time. I mean, I honestly am like, just throw another fastball. He can't hit it, but that's good job. <laughs> good job, boss. But yeah, I mean, so that's it. That's the. Uh, do I have a good look at him? Okay, here he is. Hey, hey, buddy. What's up, man? Um, I love his stuff. I mean, I think all of you guys can see it. It's electric. Uh, the the confidence and the um, the ability to throw strikes is really good, and I think that speaks to his his mechanics, really straightforward and uh, and not not too much going on with it. If you notice, he really didn't have many waste pitches. They're about you know when it comes to fastballs, pretty much all of them were competitive, which is awesome, uh, considering you're throwing so hard. Uh, and the the breaking stuff, yeah, he did have a couple that he bounced, but this you know, he kept them relatively low. He did have some mistakes inside the zone, but I've seen a lot of guys that just they, they flurry them up, they go up and away, are up and away, arm side, and we didn't see any of those mistakes this entire time, which is such a good sign. We rarely saw any tugged pitches either. A lot of stuff up and down. Um, I really love this. I I I, I think Shane Boz is destined for. For some really good stuff. This is one of the better debuts I've seen. Um, the the best, the most legendary ones for me are uh, Sixo Sanchez and Noah Syndergaard. Um, and this is right up there with it. Um, just really amazing stuff here. I'm excited for what's ahead. Gets the Astros next. It's going to be a tough one. But if he has the same confidence here, I mean, I got excited about some fun things there. Uh, it should be, should be really, really good. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this extended pitcher video breakdown. Um, man, that was fun. I hope you stuck through the end. If you stuck through the end, you are awesome. You deserve it. Uh, I hope, and I will try to do some of these in the off season. Uh, these more extended, long, really just, just break down a full start, um, videos for you guys. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Shane, you're dope. You really are. You're going to be a special talent in the majors if you can do exactly what you did, uh, with all three pitches, but that's going to do it for today. Remember subscribe, hit the bell, all that fun stuff. Um, but that's it for today. So as always, may your babbits be low and your strikeouts high.